welcome to this new video, which should have been uh, out last week, but this is real illustrator life. I had to prioritize uh, my time, so this is the, the best I can do, but uh, I hope this video is interesting for you. So for this week, I will take you to work with me, but don't worry, you just have to grab a coffee or something and I will do the heavy lifting. Today I will take you through the working process uh, behind one of my illustrations for this calendar I'm working on, which I am painting with wash. I will tell you about all the thoughts and all the stages I go through when I paint, all from the ugly stages to the more pretty stages, the reference images that I use and how I create these uh, images uh, which I mainly have in my head and how I get them down to the paper. So for today I will show you how I paint the month of January. This is a scene with uh, snow and some pheasants and a badger and a little squirrel here in the corner. So let me show you this uh, January winter uh, illustration and uh, show you some speed painting of it. Uh, so you better can see what I mean, hopefully. And I hope this video, yeah, I hope this can um, inspire you to paint. And yeah, let's get to it. So the first thing that I start with when I paint a landscape is always the background. The thing that is most far away, and in this case that is the sky. Sometimes I mix the colors on the plate and sometimes I put the colors directly on the paper and mix there, just to save some time. So here you can see me also painting what will be some grasses behind the birds. And sometimes you, would, you will see me drinking some mate. And because this is a speed paint, it looks very, like everything goes very quick, but I actually take a lot of breaks to see and contemplate what I have done so far and to see if that is correct or need to do something else. And especially with an illustration like this, which is just from my head, I don't have any reference image with everything in one place, so I have to use all the different images that I have to paint the different elements and everything has to uh, match in lighting and in saturation and all that kind of, kind of stuff. So once I had the first layer of the background behind the birds ready, I could see that I needed to go a little bit darker so I added an extra layer and after that I started painting the grasses. First some dark grasses that will be the ones that are behind and then I put some more light, almost white and pastel colors. Then I started putting some dots, or what you can call this, uh, of white to imitate snow laying uh, on top of the bushes. And at this point I was very, I cannot see scared, but I thought, okay, this, I don't know if this looks right. So you don't see it here, but I actually take a long break to see if that was the right decision or, or if, if I had to paint over it, which is difficult with white. It's difficult to paint dark over white wash paint without getting everything like mud. <laughs> and so I continue. After deciding that it was okay with the snow, I continue ad adding more grasses, some light ones, and also uh, adding uh, some more uh, dark uh, in the background, meaning behind the, the light grasses, so I could 
give the idea of a depth. After that, I continued painting the, the, the batch that I already had painted on the cover illustrations. So this was quite easy. I already knew what I had to do. So it didn't give me any problem at all. And it also wasn't so big, so it was quite quick to paint. So you can see I go back and forth. I usually put a middle tone first layer and then I walk my way with col darker colors and lighter colors on top until I have the fur as I wanted. I also have to be careful that the fur goes the, in the right di direction and stuff like that. So after I finished the batch, I painted some branches from a tree and the, the squirrel, which was easy because it was so small. You can also see here that I changed to a very thin brush, actually a watercolor brush. And I'm quite sure that that brush will not survive after painting all these um, wash illustrations. I find that wash is quite hard on the watercolor brushes. And now you saw me painting the branches from the bushes on the left side of the illustration. I put a different colors in the branches and I finished that up with some dots uh, imitating snow. And after that I continue painting a branch that is laying in front of the batch. Uh, for this trunk I don't have any reference image so it's all uh, from my head what I'm painting. The good thing about painting the same things uh, or kind of things many times is that you end up having a kind of library in your head so you know how to to do. Obviously I had to put some snow on top of it and the only image uh, reference in image that I had was one with another trunk uh, but I wanted to see how the trunk could lay on the ground and how it looked with the snow so I painted some a layer with some reddish uh, brown and put some white dots on it to indicate that uh, there are snow and some dry leaves underneath. And then I continue painting the birds, first with the Fiesen lady. Again, you can see that I started with a light pastel yellow, which is the underlying color in the feathers and then I started adding the small dots, all the small details that makes it makes her look like a fison. It was actually not so difficult as I thought it would be but a lot of work with those all those small uh, details. So I painted her first because she was behind of the male and he had some beautiful colors. I really enjoyed painting him. And I have painted a lot of birds, but not pheasants, so this is the first time. And I like the how they turned out. And the same process goes for the male. I put a background color, then I lay all the I put all the details on top of that. And another thing that I wanted to mention when I work with this kind of illustrations is that when I compose the design or the, the when I make the composition, I always have in mind uh, the balance in the colors, where I want the eye to go. So in this case, um, and actually most most cases for these illustrations I try to have three elements um, in, 
this case three animals um, well they are four animals but uh, there's a group of animals and two birds and then the squirrel and the patch and I like this uh, way of making a com composition where that I there are three things that the, the eye can look at and I am also very aware of having a balance in colors so in this case all the colors are pastel and white and some browns or more golden browns but very desaturated in the background and then the more I get to the front, the elements on the front, the more uh, saturated the colors. And the last thing, or well, almost the last thing that I painted, it was actually also one of the things that I thought this was a mistake, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, in this, the rough sketch that I had, I was, had um, drawn a uh, branch in front of the grasses behind the, the birds and when I laid the first brown layer of color I thought this doesn't look good it's uh, difficult to make it pop up from the background but I usually just keep on working on it and just try to believe that I can do it and uh, I usually do, don't give up uh, well, I, I have to, <laughs> I have to work uh, this way. Uh, so I s continue working with the colors uh, on those branches, putting some, uh, painting some berries on it and putting some snow on top of it. And at the end, I did like how it looked, but that is one of the cases where I can doubt myself and the decisions that I make and uh, where I managed to save it at the end. So this is about it and I don't have footage uh, of me finishing it. You could also see that I laid some paint directly from the tube as it had to be white and I didn't need to mix it just because I am a little bit lazy and I want to save time. I don't have footage of me finishing this up, but I think you, you get the idea of how I work and all the thoughts that goes uh, in my head when I'm, I am working. And I am sure they are, you have some of the same. Uh, so yeah, so now that, let's go back to the blog. Um, just before I go to the back to the block, I just wanted to show you the finished piece and what I was talking about regarding composition, uh, which I don't think I explained as good as I wished. So I was talking about having three elements. Uh, here I meant the three animals, or we have a group of animals here and one here and one here um, so you have and they are all in different sizes and together with the, the background which is very uh, you can see far behind here and here you get a bit like closer it's the idea that you can you can get the eye to to look at, at these things and stay here uh, and maybe end up in these birds. That is one thing. I hope that makes any sense. And the other thing is about the color. The background, as you can see, is very pastel and gets stronger or has more saturation when it comes to the front. That it also includes, includes the background behind the, the birds, but still more desaturated than the birds. So when I put colors, um, the main color that I have here are grays, white and these pastel browns. And then I have some pops of color uh, or contrast. So 
uh, because I have these birds uh, that have a uh, most saturation and rare orange color, especially the male. Um, I needed to have something that could balance on the other side, so that's why I did these bushes in a reddish color and the, this, these leaves under the trunk. I don't know how much you can see it here, but there. And also the squirrel up here. Uh, so in this way I make a balanced image that is interesting and has enough things so you can stay and at least for a moment and contemplate what it's in it. So yes, that is it. And now we can go back to the blog. I have also been removing the background of the cover illustration, which I have shown you in another video. So I do this with Photoshop and, and digitally, of course. And this, the idea this time, this for this year, is to make it easier for me because the last year's calendar I painted the background together with the animals and other elements, and it made it difficult to make a even a background. And so this time I decided to paint the animals and other elements on one piece of paper, and then paint the background color on another one. I have been working on my little gallery project that I also have told you uh, about before. So I decided uh, that I didn't like those uh, metal uh, frames that I bought and also some that I had at home here. So I took them all and I found some old very old, I think about 10 years or something like that, uh, acrylic, cheap acrylic paintings and I mixed a dark uh, brown color to imitate uh, wood. So I took those and painted them and I can tell you they look uh, really, really good. I like them. It's the, the painting is a little bit fragile, so I have to be careful. But I've decided to keep some of them for my own um, dining room where I have a little display of my work and use the ones that I haven't painted that is real wood, wooden uh, for my gallery here. And I did all this um, while I was uh, listening to some music. So also for when I work, I usually like to watch uh, some news uh, while I'm painting or some other illustration videos, but it is also very distracting. So just hearing music um, makes my work um, much more uh, efficient um, time-wise. And I was actually missing to hear music with a, better, a little bit better quality because the iPad that I usually use also to hear music is not, not the best quality. So um, my husband um, said that I could borrow this uh, boombox. <laughs> so I have it here in my office now and it's working very well. And one more thing, I know I have to make this video about how to get started in a creative business in your 40s. And I have still not uh, made that video. Obviously, um, I have a lot of notes and I'm trying to think the best way to summarize how you can do what would be the best things to to start with and, and things like that. But um, still be patient with me. I will I will do that video at some point. I was also hoping to get a better microphone so I don't need to sit here in front of the camera and not be able to move around and stuff like that, but um, uh, yeah, some things take time. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please uh, help me 
by just giving it a like or um, put a comment down below. That helps a lot. And other than that, I hope you are doing well and I see you next time. Bye.